All right, everybody, uh, just like I promised, no singing in this video. Uh, this one should actually be short. We don't have a lot left to cover in this final section of titration. We're just gonna talk about how do you monitor a titration? And there's a few different ways to do this. We can monitor what the actual pH is. We can create a titration curve and figure out um, what our equivalence point is if we have a probe, something like a pH meter, uh, or if not, if we um, just don't want to spend as much money or whatever, uh, we can look use an indicator, look for a color change. Uh, and the color change won't technically happen at the equivalence point. It'll happen just after that at what we call the end point. So here's an example with a pH meter. So we have our titration set up. We have our unknown, our solution here in the beaker, our burette full of the titrant, and we're going to slowly add that. And then we have this pH meter right here, which will go to some readout device. Um, could be a meter, could be a um, computer, and we can monitor that pH change each time we add some of that titrant. And of course, once we're done, if we've done it correctly, we should have an entire uh, titration curve, and we can find that inflection point and find our equivalence point. If not, we can use an indicator, which like I said, will have two forms. So here's one example, and there's lots of these, and you don't have to memorize any of them, um, but just know what it is and how they work. So this is phenylphthalein, and you can see we have these two forms. You'll notice on one, at the top here, we have these hydrogens, but in this other form, now in the basic form, when it becomes deprotonated, um, they're missing, and it will be a different color then. So that acidic form is actually clear, transparent, and that basic form becomes pink. So what we're seeing is at some certain pH, it will go over from the acidic form to the basic form, and that's different for each indicator. So ideally, right here, we're at a very light pink or really almost no pink color at all, and that's our equivalence point. And once we go past that and we start to see a more visible pink color, we're at what we call the end point, which might be above the equivalence point, but if it's faint enough, um, it should only barely be above, maybe one drop above the equivalence point. Um, so here's indicators and here's your example. IN stands for indicator. So you have the protonated form of the indicator, um, goes into solution. Um, as the pH starts to change, you'll have then that deprotonated form of that indicator. Um, and those two different forms will have some noticeable difference in color. Um, and when does that happen? When the uh, ratio of the two is equal to one, you'll see some mix of those two colors. When the uh, basic form is in much greater um, ratio than the uh, protonated, then it'll mostly just be that whatever that color of that basic form is and then vice versa. When the protonated form is much more concentrated, then it will be the um, just that mix of that, or that protonated color, that HIN color. So here we have methyl red right here. You can see how it goes from the acidic form and then from that protonated form to that basic form, we see a noticeable color change. And if on the two extremes, it's red and yellow, what would we see when the ratios are closer together? Mix red and yellow, what do you get? You get orange right there. So if you're not familiar with these, study your color wheels. So you know what happens when we mix red and blue or blue and green or red and yellow. Um, so when we use an indicator, like I said, once we see that color change is when we should start to see that, that sudden shift in pH. Um, and if we're really good, we'll nail it at about the equivalence point. Usually it'll be the end point, which is, should be like maybe a drop beyond the equivalence point. Here are some examples of all those kinds of indicators. So you can see for a lot of them, um, they'll cover maybe a two or three pH range, and they're all different. Some are gonna work really good if we're trying to monitor a pH change in acidic solutions, or if we're expecting the equivalence point to be something that's more around neutral or more basic. And this just shows you what those two forms are. Um, from the protonated side here for methyl red, which, or I guess I have methyl orange here, which is probably the same or maybe very similar. Um, so you can see already colored. Um, and then when we put that in solution, if we start to change the pH, we're gonna see the shift to maybe more of a yellowish color. Um, or here's the phenolphthalein that we saw right now. It's clear, colorless. Um, if we started to bring this up to pH neutral, um, the phenolphthalein right there, you can see once we got around pH eight, nine, um, this is gonna change to a pinkish color. So they're all different, um, they all vary. And again, you don't have to memorize any of them, you don't have to memorize the colors, but know what an indicator is. Know when we use it, know uh, how it works. If we tell you that 
Um, you know, the, the acidic form is blue and the uh, basic form is red. And we say, hey, we've got an equal ratio between the two. Well, you mix blue, you mix red. What do you get? Purple. So you should be able to tell us what color do you expect to see in solution if the ratios are equal. Blue, red, purple, yellow, it'd be purple. Um, so that's everything for indicators and pH meters. Yep, we'll let you go into the uh, KSP, the solu uh, solubility equilibria next. Um, but those are all my videos for this chapter. Hopefully they were helpful. Uh, enjoy. And we're getting closer to the end of the semester. Hooray.